Hello and welcome. Um, tonight we're going to do a tutorial on how to create press kits, or at least the beginning stages of press kits in Photoshop. Um, we're going to go over the processes of preparing um, to make one, um, importing that information, making one, and then exporting those information. So it's about a five-step process, um, and we're going to go through the whole thing. So um, I guess we're going to start in Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop CC 2015, um, but again, all Photoshop's across the board are pretty similar. Only the real update, I think, is like the dehaze tool or something like that. So any really current version of Photoshop um, will do the same things. You know, there might be a slight change here or there, but we'll go through it. Um, first, I guess I want to give a shout out because um, Photoshop is probably, if you want to get into media, one of the best ways to get into media and understanding, editing, and manipulating that media because Photoshop introduces you to layers, um, introduces you to manipulating colors and how to do that within photography or within just graphic design and then that information can can start you down the road towards potentially video editing or doing real label creation or um, you know any number of um, graphic arts that are available. So this is a good one to start on Lightroom, Premiere, Final Cut Pro, you know, any of those programs. <clears throat> so the first step is to organize your media. Um, so understanding, you know, what you're doing before you start doing it is always very, very helpful. Um, so, you know, collect your media. Um, I've noticed that in a lot of press kits, specifically yours, um, that you used um, print media as well as digital media. Um, some pictures, as well, some logos, um, and you kind of put that all together as graphic design is into um, your press kit. So, <clears throat> you know, organizing your media, there's a couple different ways that you can do it. Um, and I'm going to go over a couple of those real quick, just because these are might be a couple of tips and tricks on how you can um, do things a little bit quicker. Quicker. Um, first one, obviously, is scan. So, you know, I saw that sometimes things are printed in um, you know, newspapers and things of that nature. Ooh, excuse me. Things are printed in newspapers and things of that nature. Um, and you want to copy that. Scanning is definitely one way you can do that. Um, you'll get a good quality. Um, another way you could do it is, you know, take high resolution photographs of a good copy of it. You know, if it was me, I was thinking about this a little bit today, I could take the, um, take the newspaper article, put it between two pieces of glass, um, put a black backdrop underneath it and then use a polarizing filter to reduce the reflection of the glass and then you could take some really nice high resolution images um, with good contrast of certain things if quality was like of utmost importance. Um, scanning will give you a good enough. Um, it's definitely not anything comparable to um, high resolution photos. I mean comparable but I mean I always like the best quality. So we scanned a picture from the newspaper that's one way to get it in. We talked about high resolution that's another way to get your information in. Um, you can screen grab off of the internet so let's go to the internet. Alright so here's your um, your ad. So there are a couple different ways you can do a screen grab. We're on the screen now. Um, first one and this is all based off of a Mac and I'm hoping that you have a Mac because you should. Um, especially if you want to do media manipulation Macintosh is the way to go. So um, we're going to do a screen grab. So in Macintosh, there's two different ways to do a screen grab. You can do Command Shift 3, and that's going to take an entire screen grab of the entire screen. Or you can do Command Shift 4, and that's going to give you this little box here. And you can drag and take a picture of just an area that you want, whatever you manipulate. And when you release, it'll take that picture. It'll make a clicking sound. I've turned my speakers off to do this. Um, so that information is then going to be readily available right on top of on your desktop. So there's the one where we took the full screen grab and then there's the one where we manipulated to take just a smaller part. Now those two things I can easily, you know, that's part of my media. If that was like a picture or part of an article um, or something, that's one way to capture that information. However, um, one of the things that you sent me was this very long article from Vanity Fair. Um, and so doing screen grabs on this would be heinous um, because it's just so long. Um, so there's a better way to capture all this information and that's to prepare your media and make it you know, top quality so that you can capture that information and manipulate it in Photoshop. And there's a lot of different programs out there that you can use. Um, one that I just downloaded to show you was Paparazzi. It's free um, and all you have to do is copy the URL from the web page, copy in there and put it in here and just paste it and then what's going to happen is it's going to read and it's going to go through and it's going to read that website and the longer the website the more information the longer it's going to take 
um, but as you can see it gives you and it tells you the resolution down here 800 by 10,073 so it's a very large image and then that image um, you can hit command s and save it wherever you need to um, I've already done that I'll try to move this along and that is this image right here so I know it looks very small here but that's just because it's it's minimizing it to excuse me I have a helicopter it's minimizing to fit on the screen so that's another thing we can bring as part of our media to manipulate if that's another way um, and then, you know, you can download pictures and stuff like that off of Google Image Search. And, I mean, I'm sure you know how to do this as well. Uh, create a new tab. You know, uh, let's see. Uh, peanut butter. And images. And you can get clip art or whatever. You pick your image. Now, this is important. If you're going to do this, this is actually a good step. I'm glad I did this on accident. Because downloading um, images off the internet is a great way to create graphic design and add flair to your um, to whatever you're trying to create. Fair use policy dictates that if you manipulate anything um, and you recreate it in your own regard for any number of reasons, it's basically totally copyright and legally okay. So in my mind, whatever's on the internet's fair game. Because um, I'm going to tweak it. I'm going to make it my own. I'm not just going to copy somebody thing like straight up. But I'll use it as part of a larger image or manipulate it so it's something different or put a message with it. You know, just make it make it my own. Um, but when I'm doing that, I'm on this screen here. Um, you want to go to search tools and change your size to large. Whenever you're downloading images um, for any kind of production, whether it be still media or video, you always want to get the highest resolution possible. It's going to be the greatest quality. And this goes for you know anything, including logos. You could learn to spell one day. All right, you know, so if you wanted to get like a logo, here you go, like Reese's. And it tells you right here, 1261 by 693, that's fairly large. HD is, of course, um, 1080 by 1920. So um, 1920 by 1080. And so, you know, you want to get something that's going to match. You don't want to overexpand past your possible resolution or otherwise it'll look pixelated. So getting the largest quality is always important. So anyway, the first step, and I totally ran long on that, is to consolidate your media. Get organized. Put everything in one folder on your desktop. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's going to be other, other things that you need along the way. Um, but at this juncture, just get to, together as much of the stuff that you know you're going to use. Um, and then from there, you can add stuff as you need it. So that's it. Organize your media. Um, yeah. So then we get into Photoshop a bit. The first step before you even bring anything in is to set up your document. Um, you know, and 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 beyond that, especially if you're going to be doing a press kit, number of press kits, you're going to want to create a template uh, of what they're going to look like. And I can see that the ones that I was looking at um, have a pretty good standard. All right, so here we go. So this is this. I'm going to open this in um, Photoshop, and this is the one that, you, that I was sent. If it'll open for me. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm going to get some basic information and layout information. Um, it's going to open this window. It's going to offer to bring in all these different pages. Um, you know, But basically what I'm looking at is the most important thing here is the size. So if this is the standard, this one is seven and a half. Let me get a pen. Seven and a half wide by ten high. It's in inches. Resolution's three hundred as it should be. Um, now that what it does say is that it's the generic RGB profile. If these are for print, you're typically the proper way is CMYK. Um, but if they're mainly for online, RGB is the proper profile. But if you want to print them, I would suggest doing them in CMYK. You know, the difference isn't grand, but it is a difference. Like some oranges are drastically different between color codes. And, and what one color code says orange is, the other one is different. So, <clears throat> you know, just picking one and, and for printing CMYK is what you're supposed to use. At least that's what I'm told. 
So, um, all right, so I got a bunch of stuff here. Let's open them. Probably take a gajillion moments. Chose to open just the front page, which is totally unhelpful to me. Oh, are we doing something else? No, we're not doing something else. Let's try that again. What I'm really interested in is this page. Really? Well, well this, this page is fine too. Any of these, I'm looking at these ones with the border, um, you know, looking at how they're laid out. And as you can see, there's definitely a black border on the outside. So if this is seven and a half and this goes down to seven and a quarter, you have, oh, it's not even a quarter. What is that? Almost look like they're designed for printing. Um, all right, so I got a quarter, so three eighths of an inch. Three eighths of an inch, um, basically both sides, yep. And that's your black border. So <clears throat> your template is three and a half by 10 black background, and you're leaving a three eighths inch border on it. So that's the information I really needed. And close these. I wouldn't want to work off these because these are PDF documents. If you have someone that already has built this template, by all means do that. But I'm going to go up to file and new, drag this over, and I'm going to change it to seven and a half wide by 10 high inches, uh, 300 RGB, <clears throat> leave it at that for now, and uh, background, I'm just going to make other, because I already know that I want the background black, so I'll make it a black background. And I'm also going to create a preset for this. So this is press kit. And I'm going to save that preset. Save all that information. Great. Now press kit's right down in my drop down menu here. Should be somewhere. No, it's just there. So, okay. There's our press kit. It's the proper size and dimensions. So on top of that, um, I could set some lines and some rulers, some guides. Um, you know, that's that can be helpful. So, you know, just first thing right off the bat, since I know that I have that that three eighths of an inch on the outside, um, I'm going to go ahead and find my line tool. I'm going to have a hard time finding it. This thing's always above me. Well, this is good. So these are all the icons. There it is, line tool. So I'm going to come in three eighths of an inch. I'm going to choose my fill as some magenta, something that stands out really well. Doesn't seem to be standing out as well. Yellow, that'll stand out well. Okay. I'm going to come up to the top of my image. I'm going to find about three eighths of an inch. And of course, this is just for reference. I'm going to drag that right down. Now it tells me um, right there at the bottom as I'm dragging this that it's 89. So you want to get it at 90 degrees, so it's straight down, and then that can be your guideline um, on that side. And then over here, now we can get into um, your layers. Down here on the right-hand side, we have your layers. Your background layer is right there. Um, you turn off your background layer and the black goes away. The line remains because that is underneath the line. Um, and you can see the line because it's on top of the background. So turning off the line, which is on top of the black, you can see the difference. So those are two different layers. You're going to create multiple layers within this thing, um, and you can change it so it's bigger. Um, and you're going to have many, many layers, and the where they are in conjunction to what's on top to what's on bottom matters. Um, the background layer is normally locked, and that's you know we'll leave it that way for now. And then, so this line is 90 degrees and it's where I, I like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click that and I'm going to duplicate layer and I'm going to go just guideline two. And it's very helpful to label your layers. Um, and actually guideline two is not helpful. Double click on the name. Guideline left and then take there you go. Click on this layer. I'm going to use the arrow key. You can also get there by hitting the V key. 
and I'm going to drag that layer right over. And I'm going to place it at three three eighths of an inch on the other side. <clears throat> it's going to take a minute because I'm kind of zoomed in a bit. Go move that right over. It's a quarter inch. We'll go over there and get a little bit closer. And I'm, I'm referencing this ruler up here if you don't see what I'm looking at. So there now I have two guidelines on the outside. <clears throat> guideline left and guideline right. And that just tells me where to place things. Um, and since I'm building a template, uh, it's helpful to have those things there so that when you click on them, you can see them. Yellow, they're very thin. Um, if I wanted them to show up better, I think I can change the stroke of it. And now it shows up significantly better. No. Yeah. Either way. You zoom in because once you get close, it's right there. Shows you what you need to do. If you want to make a fatter line next time, you can change the stroke. And it'll make a fatter line. Supposedly. Control Z is undo. You only undo once. And then you have to go step backward to undo what you did there. Keep hitting step backward until you find where you want to go. All right, so uh, we've got our guidelines. We've got our black background. Now we're going to, um, you know, get the page. You've created the page. Uh, and I mean, now you're really just kind of in creation mode. So whatever is your artistic idea, um, you want to go ahead and use that. So we have our media already organized. So, um, you know, if we wanted to use some of this, um, we could definitely do that. Um, I would recommend opening it in a separate window. So right clicking again, open in Adobe Photoshop and this will open it in its maximum resolution. And now what I can do is I can zoom in. I'm hitting control plus there. You can also, um, there's a number of ways to zoom in. I just hit control plus and control minus. Now from in here, you can basically do whatever you want. You can copy it. You can use just sections of it. You can steal pictures. And how you do that is you just up here in the top left corner is this little box. And if you hold it down, there's a bunch of different options, circle, you know, rows, columns, um, just rectangular. You can use this one where you can actually drag out and, and create different points on your own and then connect them. And there you go. Um, a lot of different ways to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this image. Because I've gotten this off the website in its maximum resolution, so I'm just going to drag my box there. I'm going to hit Control C, or Command C rather. And I'm going to hit Command V on my other window, and bang, there it is. So now, as you can see, it's got its own separate layer. So this is Dude Behind the Counter. I feel like I should know his name, but whatever. Dude Behind the Counter. Okay, so there you go. You got dude behind a counter. Um, I'm gonna hit V, my hotkey, so I bring up my movable, and there we go. I can place that image. Now, right now, it's pretty much at its maximum quality. Uh, you could make it bigger, and if you want to make it bigger, you hit Control T or Command T rather, and you can drag that out. Now, as you can see, I'm distorting it by doing that. Um, not, not cool. You want to keep everybody's heads not fat or too thin. So hold the shift key. It's going to lock you right into place and it's going to keep proper distortion as you expand or, or contract it. And we'll zoom in. And, you know, we, we made it a little bit bigger and we didn't lose any real quality. It's on the guideline there. Um, so that's that's one way to do that right in Photoshop. Um, from the other thing, you know, if you wanted to go back to the internet and grab. I could do my screen grab of my recess here. That's one way to do it. You know, you know how to got get content. Go back here to Finder. Let's go back to Photoshop first. Screenshot of my peanut butter is right there. I can just drag that and drop it right in. Whoa! And see that's big. Shift. Oop. A little distortion there at the end. Make sure you hold shift, release the mouse key, and then release. Uh, we're going to center it right on there. Now, that's a cool thing, but I don't like the white around it, so I'm going to go ahead and grab this magic tool, click on Ma, and I'm going to go ahead and just delete that section. Now, what it's going to say is, hey, you can't do that, because you need to basically let the let this, the program read the image so that it can understand the defined lines. So you're going to hit OK, 
And then you can go over here and choose pretty much anything, paintbrush, and it's going to come up with this little thing. And it's going to say, you can't do that, but you're going to click on it anyway, and it's going to say, uh, can you raster size this to a smart object? Yes, go ahead. Please do that for me. Because now I'm going to go ahead and hit the delete key. I've removed that white, and now I have a nice pristine Reese's to go ahead and put wherever I want on this page. So that's that. Oh, so but we wanted to use some newspaper stuff too. So we're going to go ahead and get our newspaper article scan. And again, we're just going to drag this, drop it right into our program. And so now with this, it's upside down and it's cropped poorly. So we're going to have to clean it up. So first thing we're going to do, uh, we're going to move as it's still in this mode. If we move the mouse to the outside corner, you see this uh, little rounded corner. Click and drag. If you want to lock it on 45 degrees, hold shift and it'll lock. Once I've turned it in the right way, double click that image, that's good. So now I'm closer. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take this tool again, and I'm going to drag to the section that I want, which is, I'm just gonna get this dude's face. Now I'm gonna right click, select inverse, click, raster size, delete. Bang, got his face. He's not happy about it. He looks unhappy. All right, so now we can move him wherever we want. But I'm not really happy with the clarity of that image. It doesn't match this or this. It looks a little washed out. So there's a lot of different things you can do in filters to clean it up. But I always start over here in image and go to adjustments, brightness, and contrast. Brightness and contrast are, are the first step in, in editing a photograph. I can drop the brightness or increase the contrast, give it a little bit more clarity. Um, yeah, that's good. What else? We go up here, go to adjustments, and we'll do some vibrancy. Vibrance is always good to add. For some reason, these keep opening the other window. Add some vibrancy, add a little saturation. That's good. So there, I cleaned it up a little bit. And again, there's a hundred ways. That's a whole different video on how to clean up photographs. But basically, in here is your adjustments. Go through your levels. Um, you know, there's a bajillion videos on how to use Photoshop and how to use these properly. But for the speed and sake of time, we're going to skip over that. So, but I'm happy, but I don't like this little square thing that's got going on. Um, so, well, you yeah. know, I'm going to edit that here in a minute. But as of, before I do that, I just realized my list of elements is building over here. And I want to clean that up a little bit. Just so that I know what everything is. Call that Reese's logo. And then we're going to call this one. Let's just call him Berman. All right, so there we go. We clean that up. Now I want you to realize that these layers are, again, are important. So I'm going to hit V key for my arrow. And I'm going to move this guy over this one. Now notice because I moved it on top of the other one, that image is now on top of the other one. But if I was to pull Berman down underneath Dude Behind a Counter, Dude Behind a Counter is now on top because in the layers, his layer is on top of the other one. So just something to consider. Uh, control Z gets you it done once. Edit, step backward, it's shift Control Z. Brings you back to here. Um, then you can do things like add text. Move the text. Um, we can go back to this guy and take part of the article. Now, say this section where I have like this, and I want I want this whole section. So let's just copy this whole section. Command C. Command V. These seem to be coming in a little bit smaller, so making them bigger isn't a big deal. We can bring it over here. We're hitting our guideline there. It's letting us know with our locks and our guides. And if you're not sure how to set that up, you can go up here to, um, where is that? No, it's not, I'm in something. So hold on, I'll show you that in a second. I lock it so I don't distort it. I'm gonna bring it up to match that other line. Double click to set. And there you go, I'm building my page. Um, you know, other things that you can do are drop opacity. So you can manipulate things like I like to put images behind images and then add some blur to them and then drop them out. Um, 
you know, that's that's it. You create. Um, and and using all the tools in Photoshop, the main, main ones I showed you is cut and copy and paste and move around and the arrow key and how to use your layers. Um, you know, these ones you get into, but that's, that's the general basis of it. Um, you know, at this point, you definitely have someone review. Um, spelling mistakes are very, you know, common, and you can read something a hundred times and not see it, so have somebody, have two people, have six people review and edit, then go back, do your final edits, um, and then you want to go to export. So the easiest way to export this um, is just file, save as, yep, there you go, I'm going to save it to my desktop. I don't want to save it as a Photoshop document, I want to save it as a Photoshop PDF. Um, these are easier to upload, they're higher quality, um, you know, if you want something small that's just quick and emailable, do a JPEG. Um, if you want something that's real high quality that you're going to put up on your website or something of that nature, um, or turn into a flash file for an online, um, such as like catalog, I've done those before, flash files for people's websites so that they, you know customers can see their catalog online and things of that nature. So there's a lot of different options. I would go, you know, if you have the bandwidth and the time, I'd go PDF. If you don't have the bandwidth and the time, go JPEG. Um, that's basically that. So for safety, I just I'm just going to do PDF. Save it to the desktop and then hit save. Great, thanks. Um, save as PDF. And then we go. It's going to take a minute. Down here it shows you your saving speed. And then we go to desktop, which is over now. And there you go, I'm pulling it over here, but I'll open it. Preview is going to open. Preview is opening. We drag it over. And there we go. There's uh, our little 10 minute press kit. Wow, he looks really angry. Um, That guy looks a lot happier. Hmm. Look at him. Okay, <laughs> and that's uh, that's that. So I mean, you do single files, flash flip books, print ready. Um, I know this was wham bam, thank you, ma'am. But at the same time, um, you know, let me know specifically where you need help. Uh, it in order to learn to drive, you must drive. Um, same thing with graphic design and Photoshop. The more time you spend messing with it and figuring out how to fix problems, the more fluent you become with it. Um, the better and quicker you'll be able to edit things. So I'm happy to help. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'll try to explain them in the best way I can. Normally it's just a video like this. It just makes more sense for me just to make a quick video. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope this was helpful. Corey, talk to you later.